Alright, I've gone ahead and cleared the RAM on my TI-83. I'm going to go ahead and clear that screen. I'm looking at page 237 in our textbook, and we're looking at binomial distributions. And our calculator can do quite a bit to make those pretty helpful. So example 4.13 says that 41% of adult workers have a high school diploma and choose not to pursue further education. If we grab 20 adult workers at random, let's say from across the country, find the probability that at most 12 of them have a high school diploma. And so what we're dealing with is very much a binomial distribution scenario because we have information that tells us we've got 20 trials, so that will be our little n, and it's a fixed number of trials. And because we know that 41% of all adult workers have a high chance of having our desired outcome of high school diploma only. And since we're drawing from a whole country's worth of a population, each worker has an equal likelihood. When we deal with very, very large numbers, um, let's say an entire adult worker population in a country, when we're just talking about 20, it's essentially like we're drawing without replacement. So this is an independent scenario. With our data, we have a chance of success, 41, and a chance of failure. So we've sorted people into just high school diploma and everyone else. So if you go ahead and take a look at your calculator, if you go into the stat button and get into lists, we can start to model this scenario. Now, I want to go a little deeper than just problem 4.13, because our calculator can actually model the entire scenario for us, rather than just this 12 question. X takes on the values 0 through 20, so in list 1 we would like to have the values 0 through 20. I could try to type that out by hand, but that would be a great deal of effort. So instead I'm going to arrow up into the highlighted L1 area, and this will let me give a typed command for list 1. Then if I hit second and list, I will get into a set of list commands, and if I arrow over one into the operations, you'll see that option 5 is a sequence. I would like to use a sequence to create all the numbers in list 1. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And my sequence command is now going to be the pattern that we use for list 1. And my pattern is just I want the numbers 0 through 20. So I'm going to have a very boring pattern. The first thing you do is the equation shape, in our case, just x. If I wanted to do something more interesting, like all the even numbers, I might do 2 times x. But in our case, I just want each of the numbers 0 through 20. I need simply a count. Then I'll put a comma. The next variable in the sequence command is where you tell it what letter name you're using for your variable. I'm using x. So this looks very boring because it's a very simple sequence we're doing here. One more comma. Then you say where you're starting. I want to start at 0. And you say where you're ending. We want to end at 20. And then one more thing, you tell it uh, how many intervals, what the distances of your intervals. So you want to use half intervals. In our case, we want to go by whole numbers, so I'm going to type in 1. Close those parentheses off and hit Enter, and in a second, your calculator, as you can see in list 1, will have here the numbers 0 through 20. Once we have all of our numbers in our list, 1, in the second list, we would like to have our probabilities. This is a binomial distribution scenario, but we're essentially creating a frequency table, like we've created back before in chapter 1 and 2. Again, I'm going to arrow up into the list 2 area because I'm going to generate these probabilities not by typing them in by hand, but I'm going to generate them using the binomial distribution given. So into list 2, we're going to give a command to generate the list 2. I'm going to hit second and go into the distribution option there on that variable button. And I'm going to arrow down to option 10, which is going to be the binomial distribution. Notice there are two, and there's always two in this distribution second. There's the probability density function, and then there's the cumulative density function. In this case, we don't want cumulative density because we're trying to get each individual probability in the list, so I want option 0 here. Go ahead and go into Enter. The first piece of the binomial PDF command, it's going to ask me for 
what is our total count. We know that there are 20 times that we make these trials, so I type in 20, and then a comma. The next is where I type in P, my probability of success of getting just high school diploma people is a 41%, so I type in 0.41, and then a comma. And now, because this is a list, I would like the very last piece to always be the exact number of successes I want, but I don't want zero or one, I want to go through list one one at a time. So in this case, I hit second and one to tell it, next look at list one. We'll do it for zero, one, two, three, all the way up to 20. Close the parens off and hit enter and wait just a little bit longer this time. And in this list two area, it is giving us the chance of success. And notice that for zero and one, it's very, very small. And even if we get down to the chance of having exactly two successes, we have 0.0024, so 0.2%. This is expected because we have a 41% chance of success. We have 20 people, 41 is about half, so I would expect just a little under half as my expected value. So, of course, getting two is going to be a very rare event for us, just two out of the 20. Now we can have some fun. If I go into the stats button and go into calculations by arrowing over and go into one variable statistics and call from list one with a frequency from list two that we've just generated and hit enter, we can see our expected value. We're expecting 8.2 people for this binomial distribution, and the standard deviation sigma is going to be 2.19. Notice here the n, that's telling us our total count, and this one is telling us that we did have a 100% chance of something happening all through the process here. Most of our other numbers maybe aren't all that interesting. We have 0 to 20 as our x values, and we can see our median as well. Let's go ahead and look at the histogram for this. If I go into second and stat plot, and go into 1, and turn that on, and then under type, select histogram, and under list, I want L1 for my x list, but my frequency we do want to code into L2. For the window, I'm just going to select a better viewing pane. I'm going to go from negative 1 all the way to 21. That just seems reasonable. My x scale at 1 is perfect. My y scale, I think my minimum could be 0.5, negative 0.5 rather. I'll be just a little bit below the y axis. And my y maximum, maximum normally for y would be 1 because there might be one bar that has 100%, but let's face it, I have 100% split out binomially across 20 different variables, and I only have a 41% chance of success so 0.5 here is probably going to be just fine. I might change my Y scale to be a little more sharp. We could change that to 0.1, but I don't need to. I'll go ahead and click Trace. You can see the histogram being generated here. And notice, since I've selected Trace, when I select the chance of zero, here is my probability of success for zero. Notice the 4E notation telling you this is 0, .0 um, that there's going to be this is an exponential or scientific notation there. If we scroll over to uh, 2, I think that's where that first 0 0.0023 was going on for the end. And so we can look through here and see some of our different probabilities. When we talk about example 4.13, what it wanted was us to find the probability of us getting 12 or fewer. It said at most 12. So we were interested in getting our cursor all the way over here so that we had 12 or fewer. We wanted this whole left area. And I've said it in a different video, but not one talking about a calculator. The total area under all these curves is going to be 1 because our area in probability is the exact same thing as well, probability. So it's expected to be 100% of something. So this total area is 1. We would like this whole left area from 12 and lower. When you want that, we want a cumulative distribution function. So if we want to get all of these added up together from the left, 
Then I'll go ahead into my distribution and arrow down until we get to option A, I think it was, for binomial cumulative density function. And I'll select that and I'll say that we wanted 20 trials. And then we wanted a success rate of 0.41%. And then we wanted to go all the way up to and including 12. So this is less than or equal to 12. If my words here had not said at most 12, but they had said um, up to 12, you know, less than 12, words like that, then I would not be including the number 12, and then I would have had to type in the number 11 here into my formula. But here we have the probability of all the way up to 12, and you see that this is 97%. If I take a look at the histogram one more time, and since my window is so small, let me go back into that window view for our histogram, and let's change that X scale to have a maximum there of maybe 0.3. So that's a little more zoomed in. Go back into the trace. Notice that by the time I arrow over so that I've got myself at the 12 spot, notice where my cursor is. The bulk of this histogram is to the left. And so it's not surprising then that we had 97% of all of our values there to the left of that 12. So that's what this means. When my chance of success is 41% and when we have 20 trials that we engage in our experiment in, then we're going to expect that having at most 12, or 12 or fewer, and then if we count there from the left, that we're going to have 97% chance of getting that many adult hydraulic workers. So this is the probability of 0 plus the probability of 1 plus the probability of 2 from that list that we had looked at all the way up. So it's adding up all these list 2 probabilities all the way up to 12. And again, since our expected value was 8.2, and this is where we have our largest percents of the probabilities. So this is all making sense if you look at the graph of the histogram the relative frequency histogram, or if you look at the cumulative distribution function there from the zero all the way to the right, cumulative density function, excuse me. All right, maybe this shows a little bit of how to make binomial probabilities in the calculator, and especially how to generate those.